I saw this question on the Adobe eLearning community, and rather than typing out a complicated reply, I thought I'd make a quick video, which I could share, of course, with all of you as well. Let me just read a little bit of this uh, question here. I created my own customized knowledge check question slides and answer slides. For this, I used the advanced questions with commands for the different objects. My problem is that I need to create a new duplicate of these advanced actions for every new slide slash question because the names of the buttons are different. So I have to change the names in the advanced action for all 20 questions. Does anyone know of a better way to handle this? Thanks in advance. Well, I think I do. Of course, uh, your exact situation is not my own. But what I do is when I come up with a solution, such as the solution which I used as, as the basis of a premium course that I created on uh, custom question slides in Adobe Captivate 2017, which is available on my YouTube channel as well as on udemy.com, uh, I store it and keep it as a separate file. If I need, for example, like a, a single answer, multiple choice question like this one here, I can copy the slide and then create my new project or, or go to the project that I'm currently working on and simply paste that slide in. So here's a blank, blank project, nothing special here. And I'm just going to paste this into this particular project. Now, when I copy from one project to another, a couple of things come over besides, of course, all the uh, objects that you see on screen. Uh, with that previous uh, project, of course, there were several variables that keep track of which button you've selected, and there are a total of five advanced actions, and I can show these to you. So if I go to my project drop-down menu and select variables, you'll first of all see that I have four variables here, v underscore answer zero one question zero one one and zero one two and so on. And in addition to that, if I go into advanced actions, you'll see from this drop down, you'll see of course the advanced actions for clicking on either of or any of the four buttons. Plus there's an additional advanced action for the submit button which is just down here at the bottom. It's a little check mark. Now those get copied over. And if I was to duplicate the slide, these buttons, of course, would be pointing to the same advanced actions and using the same variables. But instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another copy just to be sure and then return to this new project. And then I'm going to paste it in, let's say, five times in this particular case. Actually, what I'm going to do as well is I'm going to add just a, a regular multiple choice question slide just so I can generate a quiz results slide as well. And then I'm going to delete this. The advantages we'll be able to see if this in fact worked. So now if I go into my project drop down menu and select variables, you'll see that there's a whole lot more variables and they're all uniquely named. So I don't need to worry about affecting one question with the results of another. Same thing is true of advanced actions. If you take a look here, now I have a lot more than just the five advanced actions that I needed to create that. I have a whole bunch. So I'm going to hit close now. And what we can do is we can test this out. I will do a preview of this project and we'll see how it goes. So here's my first question. I'm going to get this one wrong and I'll hit submit, hit the next button. Now I'm going to get it right. Correct. By the way, this is a fully responsive project as well. So totally works well for uh, portrait phone configuration. And as you can see, I get congratulations, you passed the quiz. And I got 80 out of 100 or 4 out of 5 questions correct. 
If you thought this video was useful, please share it with your colleagues. If you need help with your next e-learning project, consider hiring me. My focus is to create effective e-learning that helps you achieve your business goals. Visit my website at paulwilsonlearning.com, follow me on Twitter at paulwilsonld, and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.